Good day and greetings everyone and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread devotional and scripture song broadcast for this 27th day of June and we are almost through the end of June and July 1st will be on Saturday and so today's topic is titled Prime the Pump and before we get started on all that I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who is the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Buddha can't save you because he's dead and in the grave. Muhammad can't save you because he's dead in the grave. And no pope or priest that have um, now or in the past can't save you because they've all gone to be in the grave. And and uh, they're not a mediator between God and man. It's the man Christ Jesus. He's the mediator and he's the one that can save your soul and do it God's way. Or you're not going to get to heaven unless you uh, come God's way, right? Through uh, Jesus Christ, uh, his only begotten son. So make sure you trust Jesus as your Savior today and he will wash away all your sin and and uh, give you eternal life and then one day we'll go to be with him and in the meantime while we're down here we're to go witness and tell others about Jesus and what he did and so they can have an opportunity to be saved and to try to live a Christ-like life while we're on this earth as much as possible and uh, so praise the Lord all right so that is uh, uh, about Jesus and so make sure you trust in the right person amen okay so today's scripture song it's from Proverbs 21, 25, so we'll press play and sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. <clears throat> Proverbs 21, 25. The, the desire, desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands Refuse to labor. The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. Yep, so let's not be slothful. Let's get to work, especially work of the Lord. And, uh, all right, so put that back to yesterday's, and we'll do those <clears throat> again towards the end of the broadcast. Now it's time to get into today's topic from the Baptist Bread, and it is titled Prime the Pump for this 27th day of June, Tuesday, 2023. And today's author is Brother Guy Goodall, and he is the pastor of Bible Baptist Church in Hudson Falls, New York. And so there's two passages here, and the first is John 11b. So let's go ahead and get some context for uh, John uh, 4:11b, and turn there. If you have a Bible, you can follow along. If you're somewhere you can't get your Bible, like driving or at work or something, you can just listen, <clears throat> and read some of this context for you, so you know what's going on here in uh, John chapter four. Okay, so John four and verse 11b. So let's go up here a little bit and. <clears throat> Let's see here. All right, so this is um, uh, about the woman at the well, and it starts in verse 1, and so I'm sure you're pretty familiar with the story. And if not, I um, encourage you to read it. And just um, so this is about the woman at the well and how she comes and she's and Jesus at is at the um, is uh, he departs from Galilee, and then he must needs go through Samaria, <clears throat> then he cometh. Uh, then cometh he into a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his uh, son Joseph. And now Joseph's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being uh, wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. So Jesus gives the living water, that water that uh, you don't... Uh, have to worry about drinking um, and it's always going to keep you um, satisfied and you don't know, have to thirst anymore and so on and so forth so um, then go to uh, verse 11 let's read verse 11 
And says the woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? And then Jesus says, uh, and then she says, Art thou greater than our uh, father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall thirst, never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Praise the Lord. And so, and then they go back and forth, and and she's still not quite believing. So I encourage you to read the rest of that. So that was a little bit of what's going on there in John uh, 4.11b. And then the second passage is 2 Corinthians 7.4b. And it says, I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. So let's go and uh, see that one. I believe that's Paul speaking. So 2 Corinthians 7. Let's jump over there really quick. So 2 Corinthians 7. And see here, 7 and 4b. And let's see, let's go up here a little way. So it says here in uh, verse 1, it says, Having therefore uh, these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Receive us. We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. I speak not this to condemn you, for I have said before that ye are in your that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. And then uh, going on down here, and encourage you to read the rest of that. So that was uh, Paul speaking there <clears throat> to the Cor uh, those Corinthians. Okay, so let's get into the topic here. And this is titled Prime the Prump. And uh, again, we read those passages from John 4, 11b about the woman at the well. And then 2 Corinthians 7, 4, uh, 4b. And so it says here, Brother Goodall writes, Only the water from the well Jesus serves us is capable of satisfying spiritual thirst. Amen and hallelujah. Uh, worldly buckets can't carry spiritual water, and neither can worldly wells meet spiritual needs. That is the truth. And he says, when my aunt would send me to fill a bucket from the pump outside, I tried but could not get the water to come out. She showed me how to prime the pump, and the bucket was filled. How can you and I properly prime our spiritual pumps to satisfy our spiritual thirst? Hmm, good question. First, so here's the first thing, uh, clarify the well you are drawing from. Is it the one Jesus recommends? If we are hooked to the wrong source, we won't pump right water, right? Second, drink your fill of truth. So, you can never be, uh, so drink your fill of truth, be filled with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and drink it up and uh, fill yourself with the Word of God. So, that's the uh, second thing, drink your fill of truth. And he says, my aunt said, you have to put water in to get water out of the pump. So, as believers we must put in god's word and let the holy spirit pour back to us as needed and he says ch spurgeon 1834 to 92 said thou art a dry well when a pump is dry you must pour water down it first of all and then you will get water all right so that's um uh, from his book morning um dated uh, february 20th that's the date from that book <clears throat> and it says third surround yourself with believers who drink from the same well right so we must have uh surround ourselves with those believers that drink from the same well and not hang around with those that have fallen away but those that will encourage you and 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 help each other to keep going and keep growing all right so that's the third thing it says paul often lists a host of his associates who drank from the same from the well of god so paul uh, often lists a host of his associates who drank from the well of God. As a result, when tribulation and problems came, he could drink large droughts of comfort, peace, and hope, satisfying his deepest longings. Let's follow that example. Amen. So let's follow that example, and we will be 
quite all right when those storms of life come. So, all right. So that is the good devotional there about being filled with God's Word and the living water. And the more we fill ourselves with God's Word, the better off we be as long as we're believing it and desiring it and not giving into the flesh and going the wrong way and drinking out of the wrong um, well there and wrong water. Okay, now it's time to get into today's Daily Strength, Volume 1 um, book here as we continue on the topic of friendship. And this is written by Douglas D. Stauffer and Andrew B. Ray. And today is Tuesday, Day 143, titled, A Friend Loveth at All Times. And Proverbs 17:17 17, 17 says, A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Introductory thoughts we have here. It says, Unfortunately, True, lasting friendships seem increasingly difficult to cult cultivate and nurture in today's fast-paced world, right? So we must make sure we uh, keep uh, those friendships true and lasting and those relationships we have with friends and family and brothers and sisters in Christ. And so in this fast-paced world, and sometimes it's good to slow down and not be so fast-paced and, and uh, smell the roses as uh, the saying goes. <clears throat> and enjoy uh, that time of fellowship with the Lord and other believers and God's Word and everything. And instead of rush, 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 we always seem to want to rush around and don't have time for anything, but we can make time if we so desire to do so and, and not waste it. <clears throat> okay, so Canadian Eye says, Yet the interactions associated to true fellowships, uh, so true fellowships remain important and healthy. There are many traits that define True fellowships, or excuse me, true friendships. <laughs> Got that word fellowship in my head. <laughs> so there are many traits that define true uh, friendships. Today's passage points out one of the primary features that constitute a true friend. A friend loveth at all times. This love is not to be confused with being dishonest in hopes of protecting the feelings of a friend. So not going on emotions, um, but um, lasting... Um, uh, affection there uh, for your friend and, and loving them at all times even when they're not around and uh, so make sure we don't uh, uh, confuse this uh, this love is not to be confused with being dishonest in hopes of protecting the feelings of a friend in fact a true friend will offer a needless or needed rebuke so nothing wrong with rebuking somebody when they're doing something wrong because that's true love instead of uh, holding in and not t uh, telling them where they need to be corrected and Sometimes they might not like it, but uh, hopefully they take the rebuke the right way and they will repent of it and get right. So sometimes it takes longer than other times. Okay, so this is why the Bible says faithful are the wounds of a friend. Proverbs 27, 6. True friends never allow current circumstances to determine the level of commitment to a, a relationship. A true friend will remain faithful when all others have betrayed or departed. This test of friendship has been the proving ground for many friends throughout the history of mankind. One need look no further than the prodigal son for evidence of such. And that's Luke 15, 11 through 24, talking about the, this uh, prodigal son that uh, left his father's house and took uh, his inheritance and, and used it on riot of living and then realized he was wrong and he came back and his father welcomed him home and all that stuff. So you to go read that if you haven't read it yet or if you haven't read it in a while so okay so that was good introductory thoughts and now we have devotional thoughts for children and of course you can apply this to adults too and we're all ch children of god and it says imagine that you are playing with a puzzle and another child wants to help finish it with you you say no it's mine your teacher tells you to be kind and share right Th that teacher is acting like a true friend, she cares enough about you to show you the way the Lord would want you to play. Amen. All right, now for everyone, do you know a friend that loveth at all times? Is there someone in your life that shows you, uh, that loves you under, unconditionally? So again, is there someone in your life that loves you unconditionally? And we know the Lord loves us um, and loveth at all times, so praise the Lord for that. And I'm sure there's friends and family and loved ones, and if you're married, a spouse that will love you at all times. So, so good questions there. It says, if you are saved, the Lord is that kind of friend to you. 
Hallelujah. And while thinking of, on friendship, examine the friendship you offer to others. Hmm. Are you the kind of friend that loves at all times? Do you love others enough to offer a faithful rebuke when it is necessary? Are you a true friend? Good questions. So let's ponder on those for a while and meditate on those and make sure we're a good friend and, and good friends don't uh, hold something in. And um, it's, uh, how, does it, how does that verse go? Uh, um, open rebuke is better than secret love. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that was devotional thoughts for everyone. And now we have prayer thoughts. First prayer thought says, Ask the Lord to give you some true friends in this life. Ask God to help you to be the kind of friend he would want you to be. And then the song, which will be the second hymn that we sing today, is titled, I Found a Friend. And I believe that would be a familiar one to you, hopefully. And put that uh, side there and then... I have to look that up. I meant to look it up before I started the broadcast, but uh, I have to look it up here in a minute. But we'll do the, uh, we'll get this situated here. And let me look it up really quick before we start on the first hymn here. So I found a friend. This up really quick. Sorry about that. I meant to have this done beforehand. All right. So I found a friend. I found a friend. All right, let's look at this up here. I found, all right, where's F, 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 F? I found, okay, where is that? I found a friend. I'm not seeing it in here. All right, I have a friend. Oh, is it titled I have a friend? I have found a friend. Oh, here we go, I have found friend in Jesus. I think that's it. 431. Alright, so 431. Yeah, that doesn't look right. Alright, well, we won't do that one today. We'll just, we'll do that tomorrow. Since tomorrow is a non-devotional day, and since I didn't have it looked up already, and I can't seem to find it right away, and so we'll just do one today, and this one will be titled Satisfied, and we'll do the other one tomorrow, along with whatever um, the other hymn is, so apologize about that again. So we'll just do one hymn today, and this is Satisfied, Hymn 417 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book, written by Clara T. Williams, 1858-1937, to and then Ralph E. Hudson, 1843 to 1901. And then we have the story down here at the bottom. So press play here and try to sing along with the instrumental. Sad cry. 
Hallelujah, I have found Him, what my soul so long has craved. Jesus satisfies my longings, through His blood I now am saved. Well of water ever springing, bread of life so rich and free. Untold wealth that never faileth, my Redeemer is to me. Hallelujah, I have found Him, what my soul so long has craved. Jesus satisfies my longings, through His blood I now am saved. Praise the Lord. All right, let's get a hymn there. Okay, now I'll go down and read the story for you. It says, uh, Mrs. Williams described the birth of these lines. About 1875, I was helping in meetings in Troy, Ohio, where Professor R.E. Hudson conducted the singing when, just before retiring one night, he asked me to write a song for a book he was preparing to publish. Before sleeping, I wrote Satisfied in the morning by... He composed the music. So she said in the morning he composed the music. And it says George Beverly Shea gave testimony of a meeting with Mrs. Williams as he was on a trip with his father. The two uh, passed a tall elderly woman. <clears throat> the elder uh, Shea exchanged pleasantries with the lady and after passing asked his son if he recognized her. The lad did not, and the father responded, That was Mrs. Clara Tear Williams. She writes hymns. Already intrigued with music, uh, the young man, upon returning home, recounted the events to his mother. The mother knowingly smiled and pulled out a hymnal from her piano, opened to these lines, and played them. A few years later, the now teenage lad committed the same lines to memory. Well, hallelujah for that. All right, so that was a good story there. And I'll give you the references here. So stanza one, we have Psalm 42, 1, and then John 4, 13 through 14. And then it's, uh, stanza two is Luke 15, 16, and then Proverbs 27, 20. And then stanza three is Ecclesiastes 6, 1 through 2, and then Ecclesiastes 1, 2. And then stanza four is John 6, 35, and 2 Corinthians 8, 9. And then for the refrain, we have John 4.29 and Ephesians 1.7. So, praise the Lord. All right, so that is the end of um, today's hymn. And put that to tomorrow. And I'll go ahead and do the scripture songs. And then we'll <clears throat> wrap it up for today. And so we'll do yesterday's and then today's. So here we go. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Proverbs 20. <clears throat> Love not sleep. That's right. Lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. Praise the Lord. Love not sleep. Love not sleep. Love not sleep. Love not sleep. Lest thou come. Lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes, open thine eyes, open thine eyes, open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. Love not sleep, love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes, open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. Praise the Lord. And of course we have the bread of life, Proverbs Jesus. Proverbs 21, 25. 
the desire the of slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. Alright, so let's not be slothful. Get busy for the Lord. Amen? Alright, it's a good one. Um, I know Sister Patty sings a lot of these scripture songs with Brother Dean, but sometimes it's she's kind of in the background, and it's good when uh, you kind of, hear it, kind of hear a little bit more. And praise the Lord for both of them, and their blessing, and, and continue to pray for them. So, amen. <clears throat> All right, so that is the end of today's broadcast. Before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then the topic for the Baptist bread and then the passage for tomorrow's daily strength. And then it's Wednesday, so we do fight on stories on Wednesdays and then give you the a hymn for tomorrow and then we'll do the other hymn that we're supposed to do today. And uh, so do two tomorrow. All right, so tomorrow is the 28th and it's Proverbs 25, 19. It says, Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. So that's tomorrow's scripture song. And then tomorrow's Baptist bread topic will be titled The Shadow of God. And the passage is Hosea 14.7. And tomorrow's author is Brother Tim Green from Revival in Our Times, Day Heights, Ohio. So that'll be tomorrow's topic, The Shadow of God for the 28th. And then tomorrow's uh, daily strength. We have no topic for tomorrow, but we are continuing on this uh, weekly topic of friendship. And tomorrow is a church night, so day 144. And the passage will be Psalm 119, 63 will be the passage. And then the fight on stories for tomorrow. And we have just one tomorrow that we'll be reading because it's a little lengthy one. And it's titled Alone on the Ice. So this is about uh, one, two, Four pages long, so that's why it's only one tomorrow, and it starts on page 138 if you have a copy of the book. And this is what the cover of it looks like, and there's two volumes here, written by Samuel C. Gipp, and that's uh, Day Daystar uh, Pub Publishing, I believe is the name of the company, where you can look it up online. And uh, so that's that, and then the scripture, or the um, hymn for tomorrow is going to be Victory in, in Jesus, and this is a good one. I really like this hymn, so it's 418 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book, and there is a story for this one. So that's the um, first one tomorrow, Victory in Jesus, and then the one that we were supposed to do, the second one today, is titled, I Found a Friend in Jesus, and so that will be uh, the second song we sing tomorrow. So, all right, and if you want to get a copy of uh, the hymn book and the Daily Strength Volumes 1 through 4 books. They're available on MelodyPublications.com. We can order those. And then the Scripture Song book and CDs are available on Brother Dean and Sister Patty Runyon's website at www.DailyScriptureSongs.com. And they are missionaries support Port Kaituma, Guyana, so pray for them. And all missionaries around the world, you might know some I don't, or maybe we both know the same missionaries. So pray for them as you remember them. And, of course, you can be a bold witness in your own uh, town by going out and telling somebody about Jesus today. Many ways to do it. Pass out gospel tracts and uh, hold signs and go door knocking. So let's go tell somebody how Jesus can save their soul today. If you're saved, if not, well, today is the day of salvation. So make sure you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. All right. And then the Baptist Bread devotional book is available to order. Get a subscription going by going to baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org and that second website has other books available to order and if you see anything you like and then of course the Bible the King James Bible, the Word of God we should always go to God in prayer and seek His face and pray without ceasing and have Him show us what He'd have us to see as we're reading and studying through His Word and meditate on it and let it sink and get rooted deep in your heart so you can be a better Christian and live more Christ-like and have victory in Jesus as the hymn goes for tomorrow and Faith is the victory, so we have faith in believing what uh, God says in His Holy Word. So, all right, and if you know somebody who doesn't have Facebook, you can direct them to the YouTube channel by going to Ambassador for Christ Broadcasting or typing in Baptist Bread 
devotional broadcast and look me up that way. And uh, so the other platform there. And uh, amen. Okay, well, if you're just joining, um, it's uh, time to go. But uh, you can go back and watch this in its entirety. And uh, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube. And Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. But bye for now. Remember, only Jesus can save your soul. And if you're saved already, hope this uh, broadcast has been a help and encouragement to you some way to be a better Christian and think of others first, put God first, others second, and self third and last, right? So, all right. Bye-bye. See you all next time.